Hello everyone, um, it's been a while that I really posted a video and yeah, I am back again. So today the video that I'm posting that I'm posting is about chapter 15. And as a reminder, all the chapters that we're doing are based on the book of Operation Management, the Principles of Operation Management by Jay Hazel and Barry Render, the 12th edition. So um, today what we're, going, what we're going to do is about short-term scheduling. And yeah, let's get started. Now, first of all, as usually, whatever we do, I need to tell you guys where we're going. This is a map of everything that we'll be doing. First, we will start with the importance of short-term scheduling. Secondly, we start with, we will uh, talk about uh, loading jobs. And finally, we talk about sequencing jobs. Those are the three parts that we'll really uh, see in this video. And this is only the, theor the theoretical part because uh, in the next one, we'll do some calculations. Now, first of all, we're talking about short-term scheduling. One thing that we need to know about short-term scheduling is about allocating and prioritizing the demand that is that has been generated either by the forecast or by the customers. Now, uh, why do we call it so short-term scheduling? Because most of the time it allocates on a, on, on, on a short-term uh, short basis. It can be a job that needs to be done made in a maximum of months only. It doesn't go to years. Sometimes it's only days, week, and hour. So the maximum is the amount. So that's why it's considered like a short-term scheduling. So it's about planning what are the things that we are going to do, we are going to produce, when and how. So this is about short-term scheduling. Now, the importance of short-term scheduling is like it gives an effective and efficient scheduling for competitive advantage. A competitive advantage is more like when we are able to plan things, when we are able to plan the production, it makes it easy to meet our customers expectation and to make them more happy because it works also with faster movement of good through facility means better use of asset and lower cost because we are playing everything that we need to do we're not wasting time about delays and all those things nothing like that is working so what we do is we plan something to happen we do it like we plan it's it's faster and it's saving us cost other point is like a, a good schedule most of the time results in more dependable deliveries so this one is straight to the point. Then next, these are some scheduling decision. This is an example of how scheduling should be applied, for example, in an airline company. Let's say, for example, Mango, uh, it's an airline company in South Africa. So as far as scheduling decisions are concerned, they can make decisions either on maintenance of the aircraft. They can decide, for example, that we'll be doing the maintenance every Monday. Or they can say that we do the maintenance they give a specific time a schedule but now that time that they're maintaining the, they're maintaining the airplane there's no flight that day another one might be scheduling in the airline industry might be about departure timetable they must schedule so that they must they must schedule also the flight crews the catering the gate the ticketing the personnel and all those things they don't do de they don't do it just randomly saying that we're gonna take off that day to Cape Town and so on and so on. It's something that they've planned, they've scheduled based on the availability of the staff, based on the availability of the airplane and so on. So those are few things that can be really used like scheduling. Those are few things that can be scheduled in the airline industry. Another one in that, let's say for example, university, like the University of Johannesburg, few things that we schedule is the classroom and audiovisual equipment. The audiovisual unit, for example, they know that every day from 10 to 11, there's this lecture that is going to take place in this venue and we need to avail the material. We also need to schedule things like the student and instructor schedule. When we plan, for example, that your exam is just going to be at this time, this place here. It's a schedule because at the end of the day, we don't want it to clash. To clash. Imagine, for example, there are two classes happening in the same venue at the same time. That means there's a problem already in the, operation, in the operations of the university. There's a problem in our scheduling, which in this case is going to be poor. And also we have graduate and undergraduate courses. All those things have been scheduled so that we give the customer what they really want. Another way is um, in a manufacturing company, for example, manufacture company of cars, they can schedule the production of goods. They can schedule the purchase of the purchase of material. They can schedule also the worker. They can schedule when this worker is gonna be available to do this job A, B, C, and D. When should we order our next product, knowing that we need to um, deliver this product maybe on this due date here? 
So those are the important questions that you can ask or those are a few things that you need to schedule depending on company. So at the end of the day, you realize that there's nothing that is more like um, a fixed way of scheduling. Depending on the company, depending on the final product, those are, the, uh, are, are various ways that you can use to schedule your decisions. Now, the scheduling issues that we need to consider every time that the company needs to schedule as I say, depending on the company, depending on the final product, use different schedule, scheduling decisions. But now, as scheduled issues that generally company encounter, first of all, you have forward and backward scheduling. Secondly, we have finite and infinite loading. And thirdly, we have the criteria for a good sequencing job or a good scheduling criteria, if we can say so. Now, as far as the forward and backward scheduling is concerned, first of all, you need to know that a forward uh, scheduling is start as soon as the requirements are known. So what we do is like we get the customer first to tell us what you want, then we start the job. So what is normally on a timeline, it's more, it looks like this. So now, and then we have the due date. So we wait when the customer tells us what he wants now, and then we work to find the due date. Generally, this is what happens in most companies. Take an example of a restaurant. They don't cook the they don't cook the food for you before you come. So you come, you tell them what you want, they start cooking and they give it to you maybe in the next five, 10 minutes. So they work with a forward scheduling. So we start the job as soon as the requirements are known. And then the second one is the backward scheduling. Like this one, actually this one is more like the opposite of the forward. So we begin with the due date and schedule the final operation first. Now, on a timeline, it's more, it looks more like this. So we have the now and the due date. So we start first of all from the due date and we go back to now. So we need to know, for example, when the order needs to be ready, then we start planning when you should start. An example will be the manufacturing of t-shirt company, for example. Let's say you're organizing this promotional drive of I don't know an event and you need to make some more t-shirts now whenever i go to the printing company you tell them that i need for example 5000 t-shirts and the guy will ask you when do you need them back you say i need them maybe in 14 days two weeks from now then the guy starts processing they say if you need them in 14 days because we need to order this material which is going to take how long this long and so on so we will start your order next week so this one is a backward scheduling. So we start first of all with when the product needs to be done, then we go all the way back. Now the other one is the finite and infinite loading. So I'm gonna take the two of them at the same time. We have the finite loading, which assign works up to the capacity of the workstation. The advantage with that is that all work get the, uh, all work get done, and the due date may be pushed pushed out. So this one is more like you have a printing machine. We'll take an example of a printing machine here. So you have this printing machine that can print 200, co 200 copies. So what you do is you allocate only the work to the capacity of the workstation or the capacity of the machine. So I cannot print more than 200. Uh, more than 200. So the maximum is 200. Now the advantage of that, as I said, is that all work get done. So you can print everything. And the due date might be pushed out because the problem is like you might not be on time because the machine is not really efficient, it's not producing more. So this is a disadvantage. The infinite loading on the other way does not really consider the capacity. So what we do is like if the due date is tomorrow and the machine can only be 200, we can push it to the extent that it can exceed the 200 so that we meet the due date. But now and the disadvantage is that capacity may have to be adjusted and it might maybe affect also the equipment. That is also um, another scheduling issue as far as the finite and infinite loading are concerned. And the criteria of sequencing jobs. What do we mean by sequencing jobs? Sequencing jobs means we determine which job we're gonna do after what job. So it's more like we have A, B, C, D. You need to determine which one we're gonna start off with, which one we're gonna end up with. Now, in other words, it's about scheduling too. So one thing that you need to know is like, uh, a good sequencing job criteria most of the time will minimize the completion time. So we must make sure that the completion time, the time that we take to complete the project is it, it's not that long. It also maximizes the utilization of the facility. So we must make sure that the facility that we're using actually it 
it maximizes. Remember, the purpose of operation management maximize profit, minimize loss. As much as we maximize the utilization of the facility, that means we use it to its full capacity without making any loss. And we also need to minimize the working process inventory. Remember, inventory is ever. We don't want inventory. It's costly. It's, we, we spend too much money for it and so on. So we need to make sure. Remember, I think on the first video that we did about uh, the video about chapter 12, inventory management, we talk about why it's not good to keep a lot of inventory in your warehouse or in your facility. Then another good sequencing, another good, another criteria of a good sequencing job is about minimizing the customer waiting time. So you must make sure that nobody likes you, nobody likes you. So you don't want to be standing in the queue for 10 minutes, 15 minutes for a job that could have been done in one minute only. So a good scheduling issue should, should consider all of those. Now, take the example that I gave you, for example, about a food company or a restaurant or like, let, let's go back to Mango, the manufacturer, uh, Mango Airline and so on, the, the airline company. So you cannot be destined for a ticket to be issued or you go, let, let's say, for an hour or you want to book a flight that day, everything is plain and the day you go to the airport, they tell you that they, the, the flight has been cancelled. It's a matter of scheduling also and you get dissatisfied customers. So, which leads us what what we call loading jobs. Loading job is about assigning jobs. So that cost either time, completion time, or minimize. It's more like we say that we're gonna do what job, when, and how. But now we need to allocate it so that we minimize the cost, we minimize the idle time. We need to give the job to someone who's gonna do it better and so on. We need to give it to the work center or the machine, the facility that can do it better while we are minimizing the cost, the idle time, and the completion time. So generally, we have two forms of load loading. The first one is capacity oriented whereby we really consider the capacity we're going to give the job to the one that has the best capacity to do it the second one is assigning specific job to work centers so whatever we are going to do here there are different methods to load jobs so we will look mainly at two methods the first one is the assignment method that is a special uh, class of linear programming method that assign class job to resources so obviously the objective is to minimize cost of time and then there's the particularity of the assignment method is like one job can only be allocated to one person or one machine or one facility. And then the second method is the sequencing job that we will do. Um, this one specifies actually in what order which job should be completed. So now with these four different rules, we have the FCFS, which is first come first serve. So this one here, we are doing the job as they come. The second one is the shortest processing time. So this one here, we look at the job, which one is going to take more time to be completed. We're going to do it maybe later. Uh, and the one that is the shortest processing time, we're going to do it sooner. And we have the EDG, which is the earliest, earliest due date. So this one here is more, we give the priority to the job that is required in a short period of time. If I have a job that is due tomorrow and another one that is due after tomorrow, I'm going to do the job that is due tomorrow first. And we have lastly the longest processing time, which is more about we're gonna start with the job that requires more time and end with the job that requires less time. And finally, we have the sequencing uh, end jobs on two machines only. This one is the Johnson rule. So the Johnson rule actually it works with two or more jobs that pass through the same two machines or work centers. And again, the objective is always to minimize the total production time, the idle cost life. We need to minimize the, the, the cost and everything. So you understand that we have three methods. The first one is assignment. The second one is a priority rule. And the third one is the Johnson rule. Now, we're not going to do calculation in this video. This one is just an introduction, as an introductory part of scheduling. So, and by the way, the chapter about scheduling is very broad. It's just that here, we scaled it down to your scope. So I really hope that this video was helpful and see you soon for the next video on calculation about how to do the assignment model, the priority rule and the Johnson rule. Thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to like the page and to follow us. Thank you so much.